How do we get people to excellence? Studying failure doesn't get us to excellence. If you are dissatisfied, by reducing dissatisfaction doesn't bring you to satisfaction. How do we get people to excellence? How do we help our people to give the best of themselves, to do the best work? One of the learnings is studying failure doesn't get us to excellence. Studying failure will help us stop failure but not move to success. If you all are familiar with uh, Herzberg's theory, Herzberg's theory of motivation, if you are dissatisfied, by reducing dissatisfaction doesn't bring you to satisfaction. It just brings you to a state where you're no longer dissatisfied. Yes, neutral. Now from there you need to help them now to be satisfied. <laughs> it's like if I take away your salary, you're going to be dissatisfied, correct? But giving you your salary, salary won't make you satisfied. You know, that's a norm. You expect it anyway. So studying failure won't help us get to success. For example, the more we study why divorces happen, doesn't tell us anything about how to have a happy marriage. At an exit interview, we do this, right? Exit interview, you ask people, why are you leaving? What makes you leave? But that doesn't tell us anything about why some people are not leaving and stay. Studying depression doesn't tell us anything about how to be happy. Fixing a grammar in an essay will give us a grammatically correct essay, but may not get an essay that is fantastic. So another example, if you show a teacher when students lost interest and show what to do to fix it. So the teacher can now learn, okay, how to wake up a student if they are falling asleep, right? But not how to inspire the students to learn. But well, that's a different thing, right? So hopefully you all are getting that. However, excellence and failure have a lot in common. So if you say, if you do a study of bad leaders, bad leaders, and you say, what are the characteristics of a bad leader? And you see, okay, bad leaders have big egos. So now we tell, at a leadership training program, I come and say, guys, bad leaders have big egos. So if you want to be a good leader, you should not have an ego. Would that help you become a leader? No. Because when you go and study good leaders, you find they have big egos also. So some of the best leaders, most inspirational leaders have huge egos. Do they think, wow. I'm good. I can inspire you. And isn't that why we get inspired? <laughs> so studying failure doesn't get us to excellence, right? Another example, you study bad salespeople and say, you know, if you're a sales guy, you can't take rejection personally. If somebody refuses the sale, you just need to move on to the next one, right? So if you're getting upset when someone rejects, you're not a good sales guy, right? But then you study the best sales guys, they also get upset. Because they're personally invested. They feel the product is good. And they get very upset when somebody doesn't, you know, believe what they're saying. And that's what makes them a good salesman. 